Elon has had enough. The billionaire is looking to hire engineers, attract investors, and acquire chips like Infinity Stones in order to build his version of a large language model. With this Infinity Gauntlet, he plans to go toe to toe with OpenAI and ChatGPT. Um, he's hiring as fast as he can. He wants to build one of those big, large language models we're hearing so much about. He wants to be back in the game. As we speak, he's also in talks with SpaceX and Tesla investors about putting money into his new plan. According to someone with direct knowledge, people are actively investing and they're very much excited. It's hard not to be when the Michael Jackson of billion dollar tech ideas gets his gears turning. On this episode of AI Focus, we dive into what we know about Elon's new AI startup and why he's doing it in the first place. The name of the company is XAI, or at least I think that's how you pronounce it, and it was incorporated on March 9th. He's the company's sole director, and he recently even changed the name of Twitter to XCorp in many corporate filings, with eventual plans to create an everything app branded as X. X seems to be a callback to Elon's very first business venture, X.com, which turned into PayPal and then was bought by eBay. Sources close to the project have said Musk has already obtained thousands of high-powered GPU processors from NVIDIA. It takes a ridiculous amount of computing power in order to run large language models, which are AI systems that can take in enormous prompts and also produce human-like text and or imagery like ChatGPT. And GPUs are the powerful chips required to build and run them. NVIDIA has quite a monopoly on the market right now, but Amazon and Google both have plans to make their chips the industry standard. Elon's moving very fast indeed. But wait, didn't he just take the lead on a letter asking to pause the development of training AI smarter than GPT-4? Roll the tape back, Ed. I think we need to regulate AI safety, frankly, because um, it is, I think, actually a bigger risk to society than uh, cars or planes or, or uh, medicine. I knew he was just trying to catch up. Inside sources say he's been planning a rival company since earlier this year when it became clear that OpenAI was onto something. He's been recruiting top engineers, including some from DeepMind, most notably Igor Babushkin, who's technically a former employee. Maybe he has plans to build a more successful language model that will align with his ideas of safety. But Actually, wouldn't a better, smarter, more powerful language model defeat the purpose of safety? Elon is hoping to be well-equipped enough to battle with Microsoft-backed OpenAI, the group he co-founded almost 10 years ago. In 2018, he left the group over disagreements on AI safety, and after that, OpenAI dropped the non-profit shtick and secured a $1 billion bag from Microsoft. Publicly, the split was blamed on Elon, wanting to focus more on Tesla, and someone at OpenAI even said they threw a party when he left. Now, he and OpenAI have a history, obviously. Do we need to start talking about Altman and Musk and Google in the same conversation about this race? You know, Musk wants to put himself in the middle of that conversation. He, well, where else does he want to be? So, as you say, he was one of the original founders of OpenAI, one of the people who got it started. Uh, he fell out with them. Uh, I think it was about five years ago now. Uh, and, you know, at the time he said it was because he was developing in Tesla other forms of AI. Uh, you know, we're hearing that there was a lot of tension that he had with the company, with the board. There were some disagreements about exactly, you know, what AI safety meant, how hard you should push, how careful you should be with some of these things. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and you want to stay updated on all the latest AI news and updates in the most simplest ways, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. But since then, Musk has been very vocal about the threat AI could pose to humanity and he's publicly criticized open AI selling out and not being transparent. He's made clear his worries about GPT-4's flaws like spewing falsehoods and showing political bias. But the Wall Street Journal reported that according to an open AI researcher, the reason Elon left was because he felt he was better suited to achieve AGI with Tesla. Another little detail that makes me question his intentions. Either way, Musk was plotting his revenge the whole time. This AI venture will add yet another piece to the Musk empire, including Tesla, Twitter, SpaceX, Neuralink, and The Boring Company. 
You don't become one of the richest men in the world by not doing stuff, I guess. But all these companies could come in handy, as access to Twitter's data could help train his large language model, and Tesla could be used for its computing resources. There's also Tesla's supercomputer Dojo that trains the auto driving system for his electric cars. He's hinted that Dojo could be opened up to other companies as a service, something like what Amazon does by renting out its infrastructure as AWS. Elon has a hard battle ahead of him, that's for sure. Some of the biggest companies in the world like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are already in the space, and they've got billions in the game already. Not to mention, OpenAI has gotten to where it is through billions in funding, lots of trial and error, and with some of the most brilliant AI detractors from Microsoft and Google. But Elon Musk is Elon Musk, and there's a good chance his name attracts top-tier talent by itself. I mean, look at his record from PayPal to SpaceX and everything in between. It's not too hard of a sell, unless you focus on his handling of Twitter. As far as the letter to pause AI development, Altman did respond at MIT, saying that he didn't think the letter was the best way to address the concerns on AI, and that it lacked technical nuance. There's parts of the thrust that I really agree with. We, we spent more than six months after we finished training GPT-4 before we released it. So taking the time to really study the safety of the model, to get external audits, external red teamers, um, to, to really try to understand what's going on and mitigate as much as you can, that's important. It's been really nice since we have launched GPT-4, how many people have said like, wow, this is not only the most capable model of AI's put out, but like by far the safest and most aligned, and unless I'm trying to get it to do something bad, it won't. Um, so that we totally, I totally agree with. Um, I also agree that as safety, as, as capabilities get more and more serious, the, the safety bar has got to increase. Um, but unfortunately, I think the letter is missing like most technical nuance about what's where we need the pause. Like it's actually like OpenAI, an earlier version of the letter claimed that OpenAI is training GPT-5 right now. We are not in a for some time. Um, so in that sense, it was sort of silly. But we are doing other things on top of GPT-4 that I think have all sorts of safety issues that are important to address and we're totally left out of the letter. Um, so I think moving with caution and an increasing rigor for safety issues is really important. The letter, I don't think, is the optimal way to address it. What I think he really wanted to say was, Elon, mind your business. I myself do think this could be as successful as it is hypocritical. Like him or not, if Elon Musk's career decisions had a batting average, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. Does Elon need another thing? Or does he have too much on his plate? Let me know in the comments. Click that video on the screen to see Amazon's new AI, Bedrock, that looks to change the face of businesses everywhere. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.